Hi, my name is Paul Flemons. I'm from the Australian Museum where I'm the manager for the dual collections in citizen science. I'm here today to talk to you about a couple of our um, citizen science projects we run at the museum, Frog ID and Wildlife Spotter, as part of the Digivol platform, and how those projects are contributing to bushfire recovery science. Apologies that I don't have my face uh, on the screen as well. Uh, I have an old version of PowerPoint, so you'll have to cope without seeing my face. Apologies for that. So fire can cause dramatic changes to ecosystems. However, there is little information available on the response of most biodiversity, particularly animals, to fire. This lack of knowledge is a key research gap, hindering our ability to make informed management decisions and prioritise species for conservation management. This data gap exists due to logistical challenges involved in collecting post-fire data in a timely fashion across a wide area. So uh, at the Australian Museum, we're teaming up with more than 40,000 citizen scientists across Australia and even some internationally to help close this gap through the Frog ID and Wildlife Spotter projects. Um, first, I'd like to talk about Frog ID. So uh, Frog ID is a mobile-based app for uh, recording frog calls. Um, we ask citizen scientists to take it out into the field, their backyard, wherever they uh, hear frogs and record frogs through the app. Those calls are then submitted to the Australian Museum expert panel who then identify the frog calls and then provide feedback to the citizen scientists of those species. And um, also that data goes into uh, the Frog ID database, which can be found at frogid.net.au and you can interrogate the map there, you can see on the screen. Um, we have uh, data there which can be interrogated by species and uh, geographically. And it's also made available through the Atlases Living Australia. Frogs are one of the most threatened groups of vertebrates as many species have highly restricted ranges, specific microhabitat requirements and or have undergone population declines and extirpation in recent decades. Frog ID provides an unparalleled opportunity to further understanding the impacts of fire on Australian frogs. So to give you an, a bit of an idea of the, um, the I guess, extent of Frog ID and how many records it has, um, over the uh, nearly three years it's been operating, um, there's been uh, over 150,000 calls submitted now and nearly uh, almost 250,000 Frog ID uh, ver verified frog records and 198 species uh, have been uh, recorded through Frog ID. Um, the graph you see there on the right gives you a bit of an understanding of the uh, the month by month uh, records submitted to Frog ID or recordings uh, resulting from Frog ID and how um, frogs are distributed uh, in terms of um, through time, uh, through the year. Obviously, uh, spring and summer being uh, more prevalent than during the winter months. So, Frog ID and bushfire recovery. Um, you can see the two maps there are maps of frogs that have been recorded post-fire are in red and in the top map and in various colours of yellow and orange uh, in the bottom map. The top map just shows burnt versus unburnt areas and the, the frogs that have been recorded using Frog ID in, in burnt areas and on the bottom map it's also um, the details there in terms of the, the, the impact in, of the fire in terms of canopy being uh, fully affected or unburnt or little changed. So it gives you a good idea of the distribution of uh, frog records that have been captured through Frog ID. Around about 1,200 frog uh, records have been um, contributed across 91 frog species in the burnt areas. And that, that number is a little bit old now, so we've, we've probably got uh, a few more records than that. Surprisingly, there were no missing frog species, species that would be expected to have been detected post-fire but were not. All 33 summer breeding frog species that's frogs recorded between December and March since November 2017 with more than five Frog ID records detected pre-fire were detected post-fire. So that's a really um, good indication of the power of citizen science that um, Frog ID is, is enabling. There's still much to learn post-fire through the, their impact on frogs, but um, uh, we're making some great progress. Um, just to give you an idea of um, one of the, the truly great outcomes of any good citizen science project is peer-reviewed papers. 
and Frog AD has just published its fifth scientific paper, and this one is on the widespread short-term persistence of frog species after the 2019 to 2020 bushfires in eastern Australia revealed by Citizen Science. And this paper is by Jody Rowley, Corey Callahan, and William Cornwall. Um, and it's a really good indication of um, the power of Frog ID for understanding uh, the impact of fires on biodiversity in the case of frogs. Second project I wanted to talk about today was Digivol's Wildlife Spotter. So Digivol is a crowdsourced citizen science project that is a collaboration between the Australian Museum and the Atlas of Living Australia. Digivol is a web platform that facilitates the digitisation of museum collections through transcription of specimen labels and field note diaries. It also uh, enables camera trap images to be tagged for uh, um, information such as species identification and abundance and for uh, animal behaviour and other um, similar traits of animals and plants. Uh, a special portal of uh, Digivol Wildlife Spotter has been set up for dealing with or for accessing bushfire recovery related projects and I'll talk about a couple of those projects in a minute. Just to give you an idea of how Wildlife Spotter, Digivol Wildlife Spotter works, um, uh, the workflow at the top of the screen there um, shows the institutions set their camera traps, they retrieve photos from those camera traps, upload batches to Digivol as virtual expeditions, uh, citizen scientists through Digivol tag the, the species in those by species or uh, a group level identification. That is then checked by experts uh, for correct identifications and the information is then uh, available uh, for on-ground on action. Uh, so that uh, workflow was just uh, contributed by Matt Miles from the South Australian Department of Environment and Water and is a really good indication of how they use uh, wildlife spotter. So now I just want to talk about a couple of projects that have been run on wildlife spotter. Um, uh, as I mentioned, South Australian Department of Environment and Water, Kangaroo Island Dunna Recovery Team has been using Digivol to look at the impact of the fires in on Kangaroo Island on um, the Kangaroo Island Dunna, but also other species uh, in the, the parks. And you can see a map there on the right showing where the surveys have been carried out by camera traps, so that, that's where they've been installed. You can see the the, uh, the bush, the, the areas that have been burnt by the bushfires and the native vegetation, etc. So over 100 cameras were uh, employed over 50 sites. Uh, 900, 922 citizen scientists, uh, volunteers processed over 56,000 photos. So that's all through Digivol. And uh, the things they found were kangaroo island dunnarts and other threatened mammals, including pygmy possums, southern brown bandicoots, and kangaroo island echidnas were detected at many sites. And the data from Digivol is being used to guide the planning of more detailed surveys and long-term monitoring for these species. A bit more information on the project. Um, it's dramatically increased the understanding of cryptic species that are almost impossible to observe in any other way, um, including identifying 33 new locations, which were there was originally only eight, of the nationally threatened Dunart. Uh, there's new evidence of bird species distribution and impact of the fire, including the nationally threatened uh, Kangaroo Island Southern Emu Wren and Bastion Thrush and the Kangaroo Island Whipbird. At least 22 unique species of interest have been identified through Digivol, but this number is likely to increase as the project continues. And importantly, there's been an increased understanding of feral cat distribution to allow more targeted management, including where individual cats occur in the fire grounds. There's just a few images of, from the, the camera trap on the right there. The kangaroo, little kangaroo island done up there in the bottom left photograph. So in New South Wales, the Department of um, Primary Industry and the Environment Saving Our Species program has used, been using the Wildlife Spotter as well. It's been using Wildlife Spotter for quite a few different purposes. Um, and the one that's related to bushfire recovery is um, the after the bushfires uh, mountain picking possum project. Um, as we all know, the 1920 uh, bushfires devastated Kosciuszko National Park and the boulder fields where the iconic mountain picking possums reside. As a response, a dedicated bushfire recovery team placed supplementary feeders and water stations from January to May 2020 to help the alpine species. 
This project shines the infrared light on who is using these supplementary stations and how they are helping the ticking possum. So far, we've had over 600 volunteers transcribe 28,000 images since launching in April. The project has seen skinks, bush rats, antichinus, and plenty of mountain pygmy possums all captured feeding and drinking. Uh, while we are still collecting initial data, we can see lots of pygmy possums are visiting the feeders and waterers, meaning they're doing the job that they're intended to do. The images tell us not only the pygmy possums are using the feeding and watering, watering stations, but also which other animals have survived the fire and are eating this supplementary resource. That's all um, I've got on my presentation today. I'd just like to um, thank the institutions that have provided information on their uh, Digivol um, wildlife spotter projects today, and I'd like to thank our Frog ID partners, IBM, Bunnings, uh, all the Australian museums, all the museums around Australia that are involved in Frog ID. I encourage you all to get involved in Frog ID Week, which is coming up in uh, November, 6th to the 15th of November. You can get out and record frogs from anywhere in Australia and particularly would be useful if it was on areas that were burnt during the 1919-20 bushfires. And I'd like to thank um, the Atlas of in Australia for all its incredible support of Digivol. It's a collaboration between the Australian Museum and the Atlas of in Australia, which has stood the test of time, 10 years now, uh, coming up to 10 years for that collaboration. Thank you everybody for listening and um, uh, have a great week.